I read a statistic that said that entrepreneurial couples actually have a higher rate of divorce than the average American rate of divorce, which is sitting around 50%. But the good news that we have for today is that we're here to bring some practical and tangible tips about how you can prioritize your business and your marriage and not have them in competition with each other. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Whaley. And once upon a time, I used to come on Danielle's show to talk about taxes and money, but a lot has changed in the last year. And uh, so now I am actually a Christian life and relationship coach. And so my husband and I coach both spouses, husbands, and couples together to help them grow stronger and deeper marriages and to really improve their communication skills and their uh, emotional intelligence skills. How long have you been married for? Oh yeah. And how many kids? Right. <laughs> I've been, RJ and I have been married now for 16 years which is crazy. Uh, yeah. And we have six kids. So our oldest is 15 and our youngest is just about to turn three. Time flies when you're having fun. I know, right? <laughs> All right. So I, we're oh. just going to hop into stuff here. Um, Just for background information, my husband, Lucas, and I, this is Danielle, by the way, my husband, Lucas, and I have been married for 14 years. We got married in 2010. So it's really easy to keep track of. Wow, that is nice. And we have four kids. So Melissa and I, I you've been in business for 10 years now. Uh, I've been in business. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, I was, I think I started my first official business right around right before my second child was born so he turned 10 this year so yeah it's crazy but I've had different businesses and iterations over the years so started way back with bookkeeping and taxes dabbled a little bit in network marketing and sales and then now have landed on coaching and being a life coach and it is a lot of fun and a lot of work and can be very taxing and taxing on my marriage. So I've learned a lot in that process. I know you guys have uh, had a few discussions both on the podcast and I've had a lot between you and Lucas about what it's like you running your business and now you're both working from home as we're both in similar situations where we run our businesses from home and our husbands have jobs that are remote and work from home. So that's always a fun added thing to <laughs> the dynamic of marriage and home and we homeschool. So, you know, there's that too. All the people at home all the time. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Which we're currently waiting for my husband to get off the phone before we dig in. Um, so what is, if we could talk a big picture of how to save our marriages from sacrificing them on the altar of business owning, what would be your number one thing that you would say, yeah. most importantly, we have to fight for this? I think the biggest area, and, I, and we've kind of heard this from a lot of people in discussions in groups and our own clients is this idea of communication, which is such a huge topic, but there's a lot of different categories within communication, right? So there's, how do I communicate directly with my spouse over things like time, uh, roles within the household, finances, all of those things are hot button topics. And also just be in really good communication with ourselves of like noticing and being aware of what's going on in ourselves, because it's really easy for us to sacrifice ourselves, which then has a major impact on our marriage. If we're constantly sacrificing our own care and 
not paying attention to our emotions and our bodies and then kind of just throwing our husband to the wayside and saying like, Ugh, I'm so tired. I'm so overwhelmed. I just, I just don't have time. Like I can't spend time with you or, you know, if we're always making time for our businesses, but not making time for our marriage, then that's going to just have a huge impact on our life as a whole and our families. One of the ways that we, you and I were talking about this was task delegation. Mm -hmm. We have a previous episode on how we manage our households, because as we said together, we have 10 kids and like 30 years of marriage. So you guys, we have this research for you. (laughs) Um, You can go listen to that episode. Tell me how it's, it's a little different from like common norms, normal, what's the word? gender roles yeah in your house totally so in in our house and it hasn't always been this way but right now my husband does 90 percent of the cooking and I do things like the laundry and picking up the house and homeschooling the kids and you know taking care of my client load um so you know in a in some maybe super traditional worlds someone might look at that and be like, oh, well, you're not fulfilling your wifely duties because you don't cook and clean and manage every aspect of the household. And while um, I have zero energy to be an Instagram trad wife, (laughs) I have, we have a great system going in our house. And a big piece of that has to do with the time that my husband, RJ and I have taken to discuss what works and what makes sense for our family and for our schedule. Part of a big reason why he took over a lot of the cooking is when he actually likes to cook, like he enjoys cooking. He's really good at it. It was something that his mom taught him because he's an oldest kid. So he learned cooking as a kid, but also um, we kind of paid attention to our energy levels during the day. And when it hits like the time to cook dinner, I, that is like my lowest energy part of the day. And so I was really struggling. Whereas he's done with work and he's like, man, I'm ready to go and be present and do stuff in the house. And so he was able to step in and fill that role. So it's been really nice for us to be able to have open conversations. And a big part of that is not having to fit anyone else's expectations, right? Like we know that as long as we're both on the same page and we're both feeling honored in the roles that we fill in the house and the jobs that we do and the tasks that we're in charge of, that that brings us together. And that's a positive experience in our household. It's not one of us kind of dumping all of the chores and tasks onto the other person. Like we don't build up this resentment or bitterness because we have the ability to have open conversations and always revisit this idea of who's in charge of what and who's taking over. So we've both had different times during our marriage where one of us is more in charge of the finances and the bill paying, and then it switches to the other because of something else changing in our lives. And so when it's open and flexible, And not this rigid, like, you have to do this because you're the wife and you have to do this because you're the husband. It's actually much more fulfilling for both of us. And I know it's different in your house as to how you guys kind of divvy up the household responsibilities. Yeah. So Lucas does and has done for a long time uh, the laundry. And that's his like Saturday morning routine. He'll get the laundry basket and he'll get going on that pretty early. I have to fold and like dole out all the laundry to everybody. Like our kids are thankfully old enough that they can put the stuff away. But he, um, apparently I like, he, he wasn't thrilled that I threw everything in together. Um, and so he wanted more structure and more separation. (laughs) Um, so that's what he does. I do the, a lot of the other stuff, um, with older kids, the, the joy and the beauty of training them to be adults comes in. 
So I sound of really Minnesotan there. There you go. There's some <laughs> Midwest for you. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the dishes and everything else gets done by our kids. So that really helps take off of me. I also sometimes have the kids make dinner because as you said, like afternoon hits and it's at three or four o'clock time and I'm exhausted and just mentally drained from everything else. So there are times when I need to just take a nap and I will do that. And the kids lovingly and sometimes with coercion, uh, will take care of dinner. Um, and then we both, we'll both do other stuff. You know, the, the beauty of him being at home is that he can help with some of the schooling and he can help with some of the, uh, filling the water filter, just things like that, where it's, you know, he's on top of that most of the time when he was gone, I didn't think about it. And then we ran out of water. So it's, um, like you said, just working together, like the old adage teamwork makes the dream work. It really does because you have to talk about it and you have to figure out what's working. And then you add in business and you're like, okay, we have one other thing that we have to work on. Yeah. Um, so in, during the school year, obviously it's a little different because our kids are all home, but if I need to take a school or sorry, if I need to take a business call, I will try and work our schedule so that the kids are done with school and they can just run wild and free. Mm -hmm. I'm not having to have him try and watch them a lot of the time because that's just not his attention, his focus is his work is pretty involved. So he has to be focused in on that. Um, but communicating like, Hey, I have a podcast later that we're doing, or I have a work call that you need to try and like, can you keep the kids down or like play interference, something like that. Um, but again, the key is communication. And then like you said, with the emotions Mm -hmm. conveying where I'm at, um, if I'm stressed, if I'm, if I'm at a point where I'm just like, okay, I can't do anymore. Like somebody has to pick up the slack and having chronic pain and having pretty chronic low energy. I've had to really get good about that and being aware of where I'm at versus, um, what my needs are and what the needs of the house are. The other thing I think this was submitted from a friend of mine when I started telling her what we were talking about, but cycles, like there's, I have an episode with, um, where we talk about working with your cycle for more energy and knowing where you're at in your cycle will help you get more done and be more productive. But you also have to remember to tell your husband about that. Oh, it's such a game changer. And it's interesting because being married 16 years, having six kids, I think I thought my husband understood my cycles a lot more than he did until this past year. And when I started to actually explain to him like how my hormones were fluctuating and kind of what it was doing to me, he had this huge sigh of release of going, oh my gosh, I thought it was me. I thought I was doing something wrong. I thought like, I was like, he's like, you were mad at me every month and I couldn't figure out what was going on. So the fact that he actually started to understand like how my hormones cycled and what that did was a huge shift in our marriage. Even just, yeah, because that is a piece of communication going like, hey, our bodies function differently than yours as a man. And like, you need to understand that although I am 100% responsible for myself and my emotions and my responses and how I act, like these hormones are making it really hard for me to make good choices someday. <laughs> I'm always like, it's not you, yeah. it's me. Like yeah. I, it, it's all me and it's just I've, we've, we've had that conversation. Thankfully he's very, um, understanding Mm -hmm. because it happens. Uh, with that, I think we can bring in expectations. Mm -hmm. 
as a business owner, what are the expectations that you have in regards to communication for yourself, but also expectations around the house? And how have you and RJ dealt with that? Um, so one of the biggest things for us that has made a huge huge difference is number one, we do a combination of daily check-ins and weekly check-ins. So, and as a piece of that check-in is we have a lot of shared Google calendars. So we're digital people. We love digital calendars because I won't have my paper calendar on me when I need it. So all of my, everything is in my phone and on my Google calendar and the same goes for RJ. And so for us, like, one of our kind of primary forms of communication in that sense is that we share our calendars with each other so we can see, okay, oh, he's got work stuff this day. So I shouldn't be scheduling clients that day. Or, you know, he sees like, I'm going to try to book all my clients in this afternoon so that I'm not spreading random appointments throughout the week. And I can kind of like condense and, and focus on that. So that is kind of our first line of communication is just being able to pull up our calendars and say like, oh, I see what RJ has on his calendar and he can see what I have on my calendar. And then the next step is um, for us, we try to check in in the morning. So, you know, we get up, we kind of get ready and then we sit and have coffee together because we have that option. And we just kind of, again, look at the calendar and go, okay, what's happening today? Kind of who's on first. That's really like ultimately what it is. It's a who's on first kind of discussion you know again for us we have the blessing that our husbands work from home and so we can utilize them to some extent I also have a teenager so I can utilize her when I need to and you know we have systems work out so she's compensated for when she's helping with kids she's not just like default assumed to be the third parent in the household that was important for us because both RJ and I are oldest kids and so we know that feeling of default like our parents defaulting to us to be the third parent and we're like we don't want that experience for our, our kids so but that that daily check-in in the morning kind of helps us make sure we're on the same page at the start of the day and then typically then sometime over the weekend usually it's on Sundays sometimes it has to happen earlier because we have other stuff going on on Sundays we really try to review the week as a whole and look at and ask questions or confirm things. So, you know, he, for his job, has to schedule certain meetings once a month. Um, and so, and sometimes they're in person and sometimes they're virtual. So he's checking in with me going like, hey, I'm planning on booking these meetings while you're supposed to be taking the kids to this event. Is that work? And I'm like, yeah, that's great. Or like, no, I was planning on leaving one of the small children at home with you. So... <laughs> you know, but we can actually discuss that. And I think the other big piece of those discussions is that we know that they're information meetings. So it's easy to have a discussion about calendar or routine or something like that and allow a lot of emotions to get involved or like assume a lot of things about the other person's intentions or decision-making or feel like, oh, you made that decision without me. So one, we're trying to make decisions together because we always take the mindset that like, we're a good team and we can do this together. And so that's like a huge thing about, especially trying to run a business and keep a healthy marriage is keeping that mindset that my husband and I are a team and we're a good team and we can work together to make this work. And I would add to that, it's not just me running the business. Like mm -hmm. my husband has a say in that as well. Yeah. And I think that because it is sacrificial to have a business as a parent, as a homeschooling parent on top of that, um, and a wife. And so I want him to be aware of the decisions that I'm making in my business, um, there were many times I go to him and be like, how do I handle this situation? Like, what would you do in this situation? Because he's also not necessarily been a business owner, but he's had a lot of different jobs. He's been in sales, which is like a huge bonus. Um, and so I value his opinion. And then two, he, I would hope 
<laughs> as I'm saying this, I'm like waiting for his head to pop around the corner. I would hope he has, <laughs> he feels like he can be like, Hey, hold the phone on this situation. Like, yeah. or, you know, different things. Hi. <laughs> um, I think we talk about that in our, our episode together, but yeah. I, I don't want to have the expectation of it's just my business. Like it's just yeah. mine. I feel like that's very prideful in a it lot is. of ways. And I had that mindset in my previous business. Like I was very controlling. I didn't communicate a lot with RJ, what was going on. I was like, this money that I make in my business is my money and I get to spend it however I want. And like, it was super self-seeking, like just absolutely. And then it caused a lot of frictions in our marriage mm-hmm. because I would, I wasn't open and honest and transparent with him about what was going on in the business. Now he didn't have to understand all the mechanics of how right. I was running the business or the tasks that I did, but like, because as we said in our like money episodes before our finances are ours. It's the family finances. It's not yours and mine. And so to have that healthy mindset that you need to be transparent with your spouse about what you're doing financially, how you're doing, because there's one of the, we were kind of like doing some research before this episode and reading different articles. And one of the articles that was talking about why entrepreneurs get divorced at a higher rate is because of the financial strain. Now, I think that article was more referring to men entrepreneurs, but I think it goes both ways, right? There are seasons in our business, especially in the beginning where we're utilizing the family finances to fund Mm -hmm. our business expenses. And we were- Or I would say maybe not the family finances, but no money from my business is going into the family funds. So like what my business was supposed to be providing ended up being like, oh, I have podcast. I have this, I have this, I have this expense. That's not going to feed people's mouths this Mm -hmm. month. Um, and, and kind of taking that responsibility on myself, but also, um, going back to communication. Yeah. So I think it's, it is, it's important to have kind of an open book policy, if you will, with your business finances and your spouse so that they can weigh in on decisions, not that they may not understand. And sometimes you have to kind of sit and be like, okay, I want to invest in this with my business money. And here's the reasons why, and here's why I think it's going to be beneficial in the long run. Like it's an investment. Mm -hmm. It's not just me blowing money on another thing. right? Right. So those are the, and that helps them, like your spouse feel like they have a say and that you are a team, right. whether you both own the business or involved in the business or not. And he's completely uninvolved in the operation of the business. If he's mm-hmm. feeling like he's a part of the team and he has a say, that is really that honoring and respecting your husband in your marriage, the same way that if he's making big decisions in his career, you know, you don't want him to come home one day and be like, well, I quit my job and you had no idea and like, didn't yeah. see it coming, you know? So it's right. kind of that same way. Like you want to be, have a say and a voice in the big decisions he's making as the same way that he should have a say and a voice in the decisions that you're making again, because mm-hmm. if you're operating as a team and you have that mutual respect for each other, right? then it just, goes so much smoother. Well, and yes. And the other thing I wanted to bring up was like conferences or time away from the family. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say this more pertains to us as homeschoolers because we don't have the luxury, I guess in quotes of having kids in daycare or having them in school full time. So if I'm leaving on a Friday for a conference, I'm not coming home till Sunday my expectation of myself is making sure the kids are covered. So there was a, an opportunity for work where I would go to a three-day conference during the week. And I was like, I can't, like, there's no physical way that I can replicate myself in a way that makes sense and keeps the house moving. Mm -hmm. So those are things to think about too. When you start thinking about expectations, like what am I expecting of myself? What am I, you know, how am I keeping my house working as I'm, um, running my business. Mm-hmm. And to that point, 
I want to emphasize that I really believe family comes first. Mm -hmm. Um, I was having a conversation with a client the other day and she was feeling so bad that she was putting her family first above her business. And I was like, no, like this doesn't have to be your family has to disappear in order for you to run your business. I was like, yeah, your original and going back to like core values, yeah, your original reason for quitting your job and, and putting so much time and energy and effort into your business is so that you're there for your kids. Like you get to go to their school stuff. You get to be off when they have snow days, you get to do all these things with them and take a slower summer because that's what you want. So why would you try to run your business and feel guilty for not focusing on your family when I truly believe that's what God has for us? Like, yes, we can be business women and we can run our businesses, but family is first. And I don't see that, um, has changing. No. And I think it causes a lot of tension. Yeah, it does. It creates a lot of tension within ourselves, right? Because yeah, we want to sure. be doing excellent at everything. And then we get these, you know, kind of worldly messages about how we should be operating in our business. But those are meant for people who are full-time business owners and not running a family and a household and trying to uphold a marriage. I mean, the amount of like single guy business advice that you get versus married mom business advice can, yeah, it could differ a lot. So I, I think you bring up such a good point that it is so important to have, have and know what your core values are so that you can run both your household and your business out of those instead of trying to fit your values into what you're already doing, right? Because yeah, there's just mom guilt 24 seven, even if you are trying to do it the most value driven way possible. Sometimes it does sneak in. You have a really good worksheet for helping families figure out their values. Um, We will make sure to link to that because I know that was one thing that was really helpful. Lucas and I did that back in 2016, somebody else had one Mm -hmm. and it was really helpful for us to be on the same page, just even to know where each other were at in terms of what our core values were, because what it looks like for him is different from what it looks like for me to live according to my core values. Um, and those can really be guiding principles and guiding focuses in working in your business and running your business. Yeah, exactly. And it it kind of like, for me, it serves as an anchor for us. So especially when you're in those spaces where you're like, okay, I have this decision to make, am I going to sign up for this? Or am I going to do this instead? Or how many days am I going to open my schedule up for work versus for family or for homeschooling? If you're homeschooling, you know, that was a huge thing that I worked a lot on this past summer because I knew as my new business is ramping up, I'm going to be asked to take on more and reserve more time for client appointments and things like that. And so I had to really evaluate my calendar and say like, okay, what are my non-negotiables? Like, and so for me, my non-negotiables was that I have Fridays off because that's like the fun day with the kids. We do field trips, we do experiences like, and so that was just, I could say for myself, I'm like, okay, if spending time with my family, if having these fun experiences and as one of my core values in our family core values is exploring and exploration and adventure. So like all those things together. So Yeah, if I were to compromise on that core value to open up another day so I could take on more clients, ultimately that would tear down my energy. And even though like it's hard sometimes for me to be like, okay, if I say no to this, like, am I not going to get the clients I need? And it's like, no, like ultimately I do trust that God will provide what I need in the season I'm in. 
that's the other thing too, is sometimes we set goals that are beyond the season we're in and it's okay to step back and say, no, like it's okay for me to not work 40 hours a week in my business right now because I have a three-year-old and I don't put her in daycare right now. So that's not going to work for me to be on my computer all day long. Yeah, the seasons thing is really important and something I've really been feeling, you know, as we, as the seasons change, maybe not in California, but here in the Midwest, we love our season changing, you know, there's different seasons of life. And I think just honoring those and saying, all right, this is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And the no for right now doesn't mean a no for later. Like it can be a, a wait or it can be a, let's see what the next season brings because oftentimes I get to the point where I'm in that next season and I'm like, why did I want to do that? Like that doesn't even, that's, that's not me. Like where, yeah. where's this going? Um, yeah. so honoring that season and just, I had that same thought this morning or this afternoon of like trusting, like trusting mm-hmm. God to bring the people, bring the money in during the times that we need it. Yeah. Um, not easy. No, but not easy at all important but, but that's also like we're kind of flipping what a lot of the maybe internet narrative would say of like oh you need to hustle now and work really 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 hard so you can bring in a bunch of money so then you can relax and have all this time with your family and like and then you'll just be set financially you'll build your empire and then then you'll have time for your family it's like no that burn that all that does is burn people out and and we've both been there in different times where yeah. we've well we bought into the hustle culture and sacrificed our families and our marriages in those seasons and it came back to bite us and mm-hmm. then it took extra work to invest there was a time where i had to set all business aside because my marriage was falling apart and i had to completely shift kind of my own mindset and my priorities to say like, no, my marriage is the foundation and the core of my life right now. And everything else, like if that's healthy, if your marriage relationship is healthy, then that has a ripple effect on the rest of your life. If you have a strong marriage with your spouse then that's going to affect your kids because they're going to feel more secure. They're going to feel safe. They're going to feel more loved because you've got a solid relationship with your husband. It's going to give you more mental and emotional and sometimes physical energy because you're sleeping better (laughs) to then show up to your business where you're not drained or distracted by the fight you had with your husband or how crazy everything is going or you know you just get stuck in kind of that pain cycle, negative headspace where you're just focused on everything that's going wrong. Well, that that doesn't put you in a good place to actually show up and do well in your business. Right. Switching just a, 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 a little bit here. Um, just want to be cognizant of the time. I do want to bring up submission and yeah. As you said, we could do a whole inductive study on this passage um, because we both have minor uh, Bible degrees and we could do this. (laughs) Um, Maybe coming soon. We'll see. You guys let us know if you want an inductive study on Ephesians 5. Um, Going to Ephesians 5 and submission because I feel like this is one that is really difficult to swallow for a lot of us, um, in myself included, because I hear the word submission and I'm like, oh, but I don't like this. I don't want to do be this. Bossed around. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's like you know me so well. Um, so I'm gonna read Ephesians 5:22 through 26, 27, just kidding. All right. It says, and this is the ESV. 
It says, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sac- san- sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Mm-hmm. Thoughts before we turn to Matthew Henry. <laughs> Well, we cut off at 27, but you do have to remember that that's only the instructions to the wives half, and then there's instructions to the husbands. And so often there are people that will read the wives section and then kind of be like, oh, but don't worry about the husband part. So yeah. Verse 28. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) In the same way, husbands should love their wives in their own bodies and he, he who loves his wife loves himself. Yeah, exactly. And so I I think like, I used to resist this verse a lot too, or like, and some of it has to do with what is our perception of submission? Mm -hmm. Um, Feminism has spoken a lot Mm -hmm. into what our current cultural understanding of submission is. And really, I think a lot of that is predicated on a bad understanding and interpretation of what submission means Mm -hmm. Uh, when RJ and I had so many discussions about this especially early on in our relationship even before we were married because when we were both at bible college so like (laughs) what you do is discuss verses and issues and um but he loves military history like that is his thing it yeah he loves it and so when he dove into this idea of submission and what does it mean and like actual, you know, linguistics of the word mm-hmm. submission, a lot of it, the the words that they use that Paul uses and it's in Ephesians, it's in Colossians, like all this idea of submitting to your husband. Um, it's the same word as like a soldier submitting to their commanding officer Mm -hmm. and 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 your former military so you understand this a lot like especially if you are in a position in a military situation where you're in combat you're in conflict you submit to your commanding officer because you have the utmost faith and trust in them to protect your safety Mm -hmm. and that they would not intentionally put you in harm's way So if we take that perspective towards our husbands, it's like, I'm going to submit to my husband's desires. um, And we're talking in like business and communication stuff here, because I already trust and know that his, that he is for me, that his desire is always for my success, for my health you know, for all those things for my benefit, he wants nothing but good for me. Right. right? And so if, if we actually have that kind of relationship with our spouse, then submitting, you know, like you said, when sometimes our husbands see us getting burnt out or overdoing it, and they say, Hey, maybe you should hold off on that project, or maybe now's not the time to launch a YouTube channel, a podcast, and be like putting out group programs maybe you should just focus on one thing and we're like what what do you mean but the guru (laughs) said (laughs) like the gurus don't know us our husbands know us intimately and they know they can see they can tell when we're doing too much before often we can Mm -hmm, for sure yeah so i think you uh briefly touched on this, but I want to read, uh, Matthew Henry has really get great commentary. Mm-hmm. And usually I will turn to him whenever I need some help. Uh, yeah. but it says the duty prescribed to wives is submission to their husbands in the Lord, which submission includes honoring and obeying them. And that from a principle of love to them, they must do this in compliance with God's authority 
who has commanded it, which is doing it as to it as unto the Lord, or it may be understood by way of similitude and likeness so that the sense may be as being devoted to God, you submit yourselves unto him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just an important thing as we, we look at big picture. It's not just, oh, we're taking orders from somebody, but we're doing it for the Lord. Like it's going back to Colossians, like everything you do is for the Lord. Um, yeah. And and it's a, we talked about this, um, earlier before we hit record, like it's this idea of mutual submission. mm -hmm. Like when you read the fullness of scripture and all of the different instructions it gives to husbands and wives, it's this idea of mutual submission and mutual respect. It's that Mm -hmm. honoring of each other. And in that it's like lifting each other up, right? Mm -hmm. Like there is some of that self-sacrifice in that, like sometimes what I want may not be best for me. And, and that's like, we're submitting both to God and to our husbands who often, again, have better insight because they're a little bit (laughs) back removed, (laughs) removed from this situation and they can see it with different eyes than we can Um, and also, yeah, that, that sometimes they really do speak wisdom, like from the Lord, like if they're Mm -hmm. in that relationship with God, then they can speak that wisdom to us. And so in submitting to them, we are submitting to the Lord in how we make decisions in how we operate our business in how we structure our time and how we run our households, all of these things. Um, and I think like it's important too. So a a big chunk of the marriage coaching uh, that I do is also in marriages where abuse has taken place. And so as a trauma-informed coach, it's important for me to bring up the fact that like submission doesn't mean subjecting yourself to abuse. Mm-hmm. there's a there noting is that. a big difference there because yeah people won't talk about that and they'll no. say oh well it's your husband so you just need to submit no matter what like no there's a lot of nuance to this yeah. um so we're both speaking from marriages that are pretty healthy overall you know we're not perfect but we're not experiencing these levels of abuse right. in our marriage and so we don't have to take that piece into consideration where we're at right now but there are those situations. And so even then there are ways to submit to the Lord and not subject yourself to abuse. And so, yeah, get the right help if that's your situation. Exactly. And I also wanted to bring up, um, relationships where one is not a Christian. Yeah. Cause I walked that road for seven years. Mm -hmm. Um, so just throwing that out there. Um, and the last point I wanted to make too, was we were talking about how each husband and wife is no different in the eyes of God. They're equal. We have different roles. Like my husband's not out there pushing babies out. Like that is not his role (laughs) in our marriage. Nope. His, his role is different from mine. I am ultimately the keeper of the house, just because that's Mm -hmm. how number one roles that we've taken on. But also I feel like there's God given authority as Mm -hmm. the mother, as the the caretaker, Mm -hmm. um, the more matronly, I guess, loving, nurturing, nurturing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I think that's like God created men and women with these different gifts in that sense. And and that's why we complement each other. And that's exactly. why marriage is so beautiful and that it's okay to not completely try to go full feminist and reject all of how God created mm-hmm. us as women and these roles that we have and that we can embrace that role and honor that role and still make space for a business. And right. be able to run a business and that you're not 
um, you're not doing something wrong by having a desire to have a business Correct. or a ministry or something like that. Yep. I mean, read Proverbs 31, like, right. <laughs> she does. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we need to do an episode on feminism and how oh, distorted it is. <laughs> so much fun that'd be that'd be interesting um yeah let us know in the comments what you guys think if we need to uh delve into that if that's something that you guys would appreciate um links to find melissa are in the show notes um yeah. oh hey melissa wait is it oh hey melissa Whaley? yeah so my my personal account is oh hey melissa Whaley. so that's just me sharing all the things about on Instagram life. yeah on Instagram um and then the website and the YouTube are the trailblazing life so that is our coaching and just content that we create around family business marriage life homeschooling Home mm-hmm. all the things <laughs> all those yeah. aspects yeah but, so yeah. if you are trying to get a hold of her um, she does have openings for coaching at this time. Ooh. So reach out, yeah. um, having known Melissa for eight years now, eight yeah. years, eight, eight yeah. years, nine, nine, I nine? think. Yeah. I... Yeah. Abraham just turned nine. So nine That's years. Right. Cause it was before I got pregnant with Leo. Mm-hmm. Um, working with her as a coach is a great investment in yourself and your marriage. So just a plug for her. Um, yeah. Any final thoughts, anything you want to add? Yeah. I I think like, you know, we could list a thousand resources as far as how I know this list kind of like, you're like, well, how do I communicate? What do I communicate? And a lot of that is start with your core values figure that out together because if you're on the same page there Mm -hmm. then you can figure out which tools fit you the best as far as communication check-ins all of that tools but if you're feeling really stuck and you need a coach if you need a coach to help you because you're stuck in your business call up Danielle Mm -hmm. (laughs) and if you need a coach because you feel stuck in your marriage give me a call and we'll, we'll work that out Yes. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us and, um, continue the conversation, leave us comments, um, leave a podcast review or just tell us what you think on our Instagram or Facebook. Cause I don't know if I'll ever get my Instagram back. So oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. It okay, keeps crashing. Yeah. I know Instagram jail, man. the life. <laughs> um, so anyways, have a great day. You guys we will talk to you soon.